Pastor Tyson Bibb, Holy Cross Lutheran Church, with another daily devotion for this Thursday, uh, May 14th. Uh, still glancing over at my calendar. Uh, May 14th. Today we're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 2. Now, this is from a really phenomenal prayer of a great Old Testament saint named, <clears throat> named Hannah. Excuse me. And uh, th this is from a, a long prayer. Indeed, all of chapter 2 is Hannah's prayer. And there's a parallel here. If you look to uh, if you look to Luke chapter two and uh, and uh, the Magnificat, that is Mary's prayer, you notice a lot of similarities here. Uh, but this is one of the great Old Testament prayers, um, and so what we have here, First uh, Samuel two verse two. This is our verse for the day. There is none holy like the Lord, for there is none besides you. There is no rock like our God. Uh, what a great confession of the one true God. There's no rock like our God. Uh, he is the strong place. He is our foundation, the one who cannot be overcome. Uh, he is our fortress, our high place, right? Uh, and throughout all of Hannah's prayer, and I invite you to, and encourage you to read the whole prayer uh, today, um, we have just these beautiful things. I'm going to share some of this with you. Uh, she starts off, My heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. Uh, her portion lifted up. God shows her favor. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. So all those who were, uh, who were after her, uh, seeking her downfall, uh, now she can deride them uh, because of the salvation that she has in the Lord. Uh, those who unjustly sought her fall are now themselves fallen. Uh, so she continues, There is none holy like the Lord. This is our verse for the day, that for there is none besides you. There is no rock like our God. And she says, Praise, talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. He's the judge, the true judge, the just judge, right? Verse 4, The bows of the mighty are broken but the feeble bind on strength. Uh, those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who were hungry have ceased to hunger. Uh, the barren, that is the barren one, the barren woman, she now bears seven. Um, or rather, the barren has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and he exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. Wow. If that's not a gospel picture here, I don't know what it is. Just wonderful stuff. Uh, for the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness, for the, by might shall a man, but for not rather by might shall a man prevail. Uh, we just have so many things here, too much to really pick apart in a short devotion video. Uh, but we see this, this theme of the great exchange, the Lord casting down the mighty, lifting up the lowly, uh, that itself being language for the Magnificat, which is mirrored here in Hannah's prayer. Um, the bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble uh, bind on strength. So these mighty warriors decked out for battle, they're nothing, but the feeble, they have strength because the Lord gives it to them. Uh, right? Those who were full have now hired themselves out for bread, but those who are hungry, they've ceased to hunger. Uh, so the barren woman, and barrenness was always seen as a curse in the Old Testament. The barren has borne seven, right? And seven, that number, a, a godly number. Uh, but she who has many children is forlorn. So again, this great exchange. Uh, and, and we are those who have been raised uh, from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. Um, we of ourselves, again, we have nothing. Uh, there is nothing good that dwells in us that is our flesh, borrowing some words from St. Paul. Uh, but in Christ, we have all things. We, we really deserve nothing but present and eternal condemnation and punishment from the Lord because of our sin. Uh, not only the sin that we've inherited from Adam and Eve, but also our actual sins of thought, word, and deed that we've piled on to the sin we inherited from Adam and Eve. But the Lord is merciful and gracious to us. He takes our sin upon the cross, places it on, the, uh, on his son, Jesus, our Savior, and Jesus gives to us his righteousness through faith. Uh, and even this faith which we have is a gift God gives us by means of his word. 
so faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ, as Paul writes in Romans 10, 17. Uh, this great exchange, we don't deserve anything but death and punishment, but instead God gives us his grace, his mercy. Uh, all those who have repentant faith in Jesus receive these things. Uh, again, forgiveness, life, and salvation. I'll never stop saying it. Uh, these are the things which we receive through Christ's word and sacraments. So God is merciful. Uh, he is the one who, um, well, as Hannah says, there is none holy like the Lord, for there is none besides you. There is no rock like our God. Thanks be to God who is the rock of our salvation. Uh, the rock who was split on the cross and then proceeded forth uh, waters of, uh, or, uh, living waters of eternal life uh, that we have in Christ and his word. Um, wonderful, wonderful stuff today. I encourage you to read all of, uh, of 1 Samuel chapter 2 and take in that whole prayer. Uh, make, that, make those words part of your daily prayers even, uh, remembering that the Lord has lifted you up out of the ash heap and has prepared for you a place in heaven uh, to make you sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor uh, there before the Lord for all eternity. Thanks and praise be to God. God's blessings to you as you go about your day.